Okay, what we're going to do today is we're going to uh, do an LODA water weed simulation where you guys are actually going to use LODA, which is sometimes called the water weed, and it explains in here that that's true. And the reason it's called the water weed is growing probably, and the definition of a weed is any plant that grows where you don't want it. So this is probably growing in places where we want to use propellers, which can go with propellers. But it's actually thought to take over normal vegetation, it lives in the area. Well, we are finding out that it actually works pretty well with the vegetation, it definitely gives habitat for small creatures critters, keeping them out of the eyes of larger critters. But we're going to actually look at the rate of photosynthesis based on some uh, different things. First thing I'd like you to do is decide whether or not you want to open up the file from our website, or and that's in the O5 Cell Energy folder. And you can actually save this to your desktop on your computer and do this anytime you want to, or you have access to it by clicking this link, and that's what I'm going to do first. Okay, so here's the actual link, and what we have is we have the water weed, the yellow deal plant, sitting in water. We can adjust the light, we can adjust the carbon dioxide, the color of the light, and also the light level. So you can see we can go colorless, we can go to blue, I think there's supposed to be a red one there. If we can go to red, we can go to blue, we can go to green, or you go back to colorless. So you've got four different choices. Light level, you can go all the way down from zero. Notice no light here. It defaults to two, which is... Yeah, in there somewhere. It goes all the way up to 10. So I'm going to go back to 2. Same thing with carbon dioxide. You can go all the way down to 0. And remember carbon dioxide all the way up to 10. Carbon dioxide is more of a food for the whole process of photosynthesis. Um, we're going to default it back down to... I hate that when that happens. We're going to default it to 2. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try 1x, where 1 second is 1 second. This simulation runs for 30 seconds, so I'm going to click Start. And we're just going to watch this thing go. There goes one bubble. And you can see the bubbles, but as you heard, you can also hear them as well. Okay, we're at 17, 18, 19, 20 seconds. We've got four bubbles. 25 seconds, still four bubbles. There goes another one. There goes two more. Oh, they didn't make it up. Oh, maybe they did. So we got seven bubbles. You can also adjust it to 5x, where now one second is five seconds of lab time. Same conditions. Let's see if we can get a different set of data. One bubble, two, three. Okay, we got six bubbles on that one. I mean, you can actually see that this simulation actually adjusts data based on runs. So if you're trying to actually figure it out, um, same conditions don't always give you the same results, which actually works out really well. Okay, if you go to our site again, and you click the link, I'm not sure whether you can see it down here. It's asking me whether I want to open it or save it. I want to open it. It's going to open up with IE, and same thing, you can adjust, adjust the different colors, you can adjust the light levels, you can adjust the carbon dioxide, you can do anything you want, you can do that, and you can see we do the same sort of thing. Okay, we go back to the simulation. Um, you're going to do three different tests. You're going to affect the light color, so you're going to actually set the light for 6. You're going to set the carbon di dioxide to 6, keeping them as a constant. And the only variable is going to be color, number of bubbles for red, blue, green, and the colorless light. And then answer these three questions. Effective light level, so what you're going to do is you're going to actually set the light to colorless and the carbon dioxide to 6, and you're going to try the light levels from 1 all the way down to 10, answering these two questions. And the last thing is you're going to actually look at, you're going to design your own experiment with carbon dioxide levels. And what you're going to do is you're going to set up your own data table. So you're going to actually have your light as your constant, your light level is constant, and you're going to actually set up the carbon dioxide levels just like the light going from 1 to 10. And then I want you to graph that result. So create your own data table, sort of like the one that I'm giving you up there. Um, answer 6. Once you're done with this, you're going to use graph. And there's analytical questions that I want you to answer. You can wait until after you graph it. I'm giving you two sheets of graph paper in case you mess up with one. Now the first thing you're going to have to decide is what's your IV and what's your DV. What did you know before you saw the experiment? Well, you knew in this case, you knew what the level of light you were going to use. What you didn't know was the amount of bubbles you were going to get with each 
each of those uh, levels. So your IV is this one and your DV is going to be here. So the next thing is you always put the IV down on the x-axis, the bottom. Do you want to do this one portrait the way it is right now? And what that will do is if you put the number of bubbles here, it will actually show uh, carbon dioxide on the long one and then bubbles on the short one and you'll actually watch the bubbles go this way or would you rather actually put the carbon dioxide down here and the bubbles on here and watch the bubbles go up and down um, you figure out which one actually shows the data the best way then go ahead and answer these questions the analysis questions sort of like your conclusion and then you're done you'll also be watching osmosis jones the, the movie we started a couple weeks ago I'm hoping that gets queued up so you can watch that as well thank you much bye bye